God. My God is stronger and greater and bigger and better than all of it. And that's who we've come to worship today. Can I say welcome for, for uh, to you today? Some of you, this is your first time here, and I want to just say welcome. We're so glad you're here. The first part of our service we call family time. And so what we do is we celebrate and we laugh a little bit and we talk a little bit and so I'm just really glad you're here and I'm squeaking a little bit but my microphone is squeaking a little bit now you know I've, I've been reading up on that one of the causes of microphone problems is when you are about to become a grandparent <laughs> Microphone problems and being a grandparent. <laughs> so I'm glad y'all are here today. Um, pardon our, I mean, I don't know our, our progress. We're thankful to have a wonderful school to meet in as our church family, and so we're just glad you're here. Um, let's see, Channing, do you have friends with you today? Who could you introduce them to us? I'm glad y'all are here. Can y'all stand up and let us wave at you? Thank y'all for being here. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. I've got a couple things. Uh, this is, I'm not sure what color that is, but I'm going to use this one. Okay? Um, I got a couple things I got to recognize. Now, yesterday we had our men's prayer breakfast. And sometimes after our men's prayer breakfast, some of our men have an event afterwards. And we go golfing sometimes. So yesterday, some of our men went golfing. And something happened. Good. So Walter, come up here. Come up here. Get up there. after church today. For the first time in his illustrious golf career, Avery, did he tell you about this? I, I'm sure he did. I bet he sent you pictures too, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, for the first time in his career, Walter had a hole in the line. That's a trophy. And this is legit. This is a... Uh, what do they call these? American Eagles, Eagle. Uh, silver dollar. And this is the hole-in-one, CCMP hole-in-one king. Congratulations, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. So now, he has a really cool ball marker when he's <laughs> All right. I need, let me see what else. Congratulations. I need next Thank you. to come up here. I told y'all this is family time, so y'all, if you're not interested, just I'm going with brown. I can't see act like you are. <laughs> it's brown or red? Nathan and uh, yeah, he Roy. Red. Okay. Come on, boy. Who's Nathan? <laughs> Come on up here, Roy. We got to, we celebrate now. Roy, what do you have there? What, what is that? A power derby uh, first place. First place Power Derby Trophy is this is this is the winning the winning car right here. That's amazing the the, the, the develop, design. Now I'm I'm gonna guess that your dad probably wasn't involved in this at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking his head, yeah. But if he was, it's okay. So I understand that Roy dethroned the king yesterday. The guy had it for a long time, but we have a new champion right here. So, yeah. Man, Nathan, it's got, look, look, I want you to explain to me what this is. Two first place, and, and you, I want you to explain that to me. Okay, so we have a TSA for our school, and it's a uh, technology class. So we went to Appalachia State for a competition. So, <laughs> Solar car, we made my partner made a solar car, and we got first place for that too. Don't just don't let it be said that we don't have 
some smart people over there at CCM. So, guys, I want y'all to know we are very proud of you, and you go as far as you can go and bring back some more trophies. Okay? Thank y'all. Let's give them a hand. I want you to want to make. Um, let's see. I have our new batch of daily breads. Many of you have been using these for your devotionals. And this is March, April, May. Uh, how many of you have used daily breads? I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm old, and I had these when I was a little kid. They've been around a long time. In fact, there used to be a TV program on Sunday mornings called Day of Discovery. And Richard D. Hahn. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. These are the people that did this. Many, many, and they still have it. And I have a lot of these over here. And I would like for you to have a devotional. Take it home with you. Put it in your Bible. And in the morning or whenever you do your devotions, you use this if you do not already have a devotional system. So this is out and it's available. Uh, let's see. What else do I have here? Um, All right. Uh, let me see you, Mike, one more time before we pray. I, I want us to think about um, the family and the, the whole influence of Billy Graham. Um, you, you, you know when that came out this week, and it's just been amazing. And I remember a couple weeks ago our speaker brought us this thought, the power of one. Boy, there's a man that gave his life to Jesus. And look, literally, God impacted this world through the ministry and the life of one man named Billy Graham. I, I would venture to say that probably some of you in here met uh, Billy Graham. And, and How many of you have been to one of his crusades? Did anybody get saved under the ministry of Billy Graham? That's, uh, that's hard to... Uh, you just don't know. But I want us to pray. And uh, listen, we don't have to pray for Him. He's good. He's really good. He is more free than He's ever been. And so, I don't know exactly how the trophies go in heaven. I don't know. But, but he's, he's done well. And so, let's remember that impact that it continues. Also, I have a real special prayer request. Could you share that more? Just, just if you wouldn't mind sharing that. We want to pray for this family. My grandfather passed away yesterday while he was sleeping. I just want to pray for my family and my mom. Yeah, absolutely. So, Joe, I, I want you to, to remember that, and then you take us into our prayer time today. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. Well, you got up earlier this morning. You uh, had a chance to see a beautiful sun. Everything's just so pretty out there, bird for sea. And now, guess what's coming? <laughs> That's some rain. Well, what I want to talk about now, this morning, and everybody, like we leave church, we probably have lunch at home or somewhere else. Now, when you go to places like Logan's, Longhorn Steakhouse, or O'Charlie's, you place your order and everything. What's the first thing that you can bring out and sit on your table? What's that? Bread. Oh, Lord. Bread, the staple food. Now, that, is that not some of the best stuff? That's warm rolls and just put butter on them and it just melt in your mouth, don't you? A loaf of bread to eat. That is so good. God had a plan also. God had a plan. Besides just feeding our physical selves, he knew we needed feeding uh, feed, uh, spiritual. Okay? And if you look in the book of John, in chapter 6, there's a passage of scripture that Jesus uses to describe himself. Okay? In John chapter 6, starting with verse 33, we'll read a few verses. 
It says here, For the bread of God, this is Jesus speaking, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. He was talking to a number of people. Then say they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. I don't think they truly understood yet, did they? And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I also want you to look, we're going to slip over to a couple more verses, 48 through 51 of that same chapter. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that if a man may eat it thereof and shall not die, I am the living bread which cometh down from heaven, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forevermore. And the bread that thou, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the, uh, for the life of the world, every one of us. I think about that. And I also think back to a passage of scripture in Psalms. You know, when we eat that bread at the restaurants and stuff, it just tastes so good, doesn't it? It tastes good. But if you look in the book of Psalms, 34th chapter, David's writing something in verse 8. It's very short. I'll just read the first part of it. He said, Oh, taste and see that God is good. Everybody in this room, You have tasted the goodness of God. And I think there's a lot of people that have tasted the goodness of God. It's something you can hold on to forever in your life, even into eternity. Billy Graham, he tasted the bread of life. He lived and walked and taught the world about the bread of life. Let's do that in our everyday walk in our lives and tell others about Jesus who he is. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Oh, taste and see that God is good. He gave us the perfect gift in Jesus. Let's slide into some prayer time now. Uh, the lady that asked for prayer for us right there, uh, your grandfather that passed away. Can you give me his name? That's all right. Okay, don't no worry. Okay, that's all right. The Lord knows. We know there's a need in that family. Okay, so let's pray for that family. And we got others. Let's remember Hub. How's Hub? Going back. Let's pray for the whole family. Uh, a lot of things going on. Uh, let's remember the. Graham family. Uh, if you look at your list, you see a number of names there. Now, if there's names not on there, if you have somebody that you would like to uh, lift up in prayer by, just raise in your hand if you have somebody special prayer request for somebody. Anybody? Okay. See them throughout being raised up. God knows who they are. When we're praying, just raise up that name. Okay? Raise up that name. Okay, hey, let's go to Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the abundance of life that you give us. And we thank you for loving us so much that we actually have a chance to taste the goodness of glory in Jesus Christ, your Son. So God, we just thank you so much. And we just ask, Father, that all these prayer requests that are on our prayer list here, all the hands that have been lifted up, the spoken request, Father, a young lady that lost her grandfather. He passed away. Lord, I just pray you just wrap your arms of love around this family. I pray, I just pray you, you camp your angels around about them and protect them and give them peace in their heart. 
there's going to be some time of healing, God. You'll be missed. So, God, I just pray you just minister as only you can to that family. Lord, that uh, your love just speak to them in a mighty way. Lord, your grace we know is sufficient for all needs. So, Lord, just love on them and care and hold them so tight to you, God, that they'll feel your presence in a mighty way. We thank you for, and once again this day, we thank you for what we've already felt in the service through the singing of your songs, God. Lord, I just pray as we go forward from here, God, Lord, that you would just, your Holy Spirit would move in a mighty way throughout this whole congregation. And if there's one person here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Savior, Lord, I pray today they will receive the bread of life. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks a lot for bringing up bread right before church here, so now we're all going to be hungry, ready for lunch, right? <laughs> you know, the Bible says, uh, where they're there for you, eat, eat, drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And we do a lot of things here, and we try to do it all for the glory of God. We have, uh, we celebrate a lot of things, and, and we realize that church is more than just Sunday morning. Church is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we have uh, we do sports here. We we play golf and we do lots of things. Uh, we are having a men's softball team this spring. This will be our first CCMP softball team, men's softball. And so if you uh, are interested in that, I need for you to see Cecil after church over here or Justin. Justin, wave at me. There's Justin. Uh, and and if you have questions, see those guys. And I believe uh, Allie, did we play this weekend? How did we do last weekend? I got first place. First place, the volleyball. Oh, awesome. Love team. And uh, what's the age group? Thirteen year old. Awesome. Congratulations. We'll have to come watch you play sometime. Good. All right. If you have a bulletin, I want to highlight a couple things really quick, and then we'll be finished with our family time. Um, speaking of bread. Some of you have been invited to what we call Discover CCMV. This is a inform, information luncheon. It is, uh, it, if you have questions about our church, if you've been attending our church, just, just anything you'd like to know, we take this time and we have lunch. We provide a lunch for you. And we give you some information about our church, how you can be involved, the different ministry of our church. And we tell you about our past and our present. And we share our vision with you because you need to know about your church. you got a church home. You need to believe in it and, and trust it and understand it. So if, you are, if you're like that, if you've been attending our church and, uh, and would like to come to our luncheon today, it's right after the service at the barn. The directions to the barn, the address to the barn is in the bullet. Okay? Uh, I think that, let's see, also if you are a parent of teenagers, there's a schedule in the bulletin of some of our events coming up for our youth group. Last week we had uh, 20 teenagers out, and it was a fantastic night with the youth group. We're growing, a lot of neat things planned. So uh, parents, bring your kids to the youth group tonight, 6 o'clock. Also, prayer and planning is Sunday nights at 6 o'clock. It's for everybody. We have a, a brief time of information and assessment and evaluation that we pray. So we'll do that tonight at 6 o'clock, all right? Uh, one last thing. Every Wednesday, we have a group in our church called the Classics. And they meet every Wednesday. Normally, they meet at 10 o'clock. But the last Wednesday of every month, they meet at 6 o'clock. So that perhaps if you can't come at 10, on that Wednesday, you can come at 6 o'clock. So if you would, uh, I would really encourage you to come out. This is our senior adult ministry of our church. This Wednesday, 6 o'clock at the bar. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry. Speaking of food again. I, why I talk about food so much? Um, I have been working with the... Has anybody noticed we have a new restaurant in Mount Pleasant? And the, the name of the restaurant is... Some of you have been there. Most of you have been there. Uh, we've been working with the management there. And they're going to start in March a Sunday brunch. And it, it really has a lot to do with, with church people. So we've worked with them and they said, what do you think? When should we do it? 
And so next Sunday, starting in March, we're going to have a uh, open for Sunday brunch, and the time will be from 11 to 2. So if your preacher will not go too long, don't say, if you said amen to that, we need to meet. Church discipline. So anyway, no, we're good. Because I have a reservation for next Sunday at 1 o'clock. That gave me plenty of time. No, I'm kidding about that. So it's going to be some type of a buffet, and uh, the prices will be amended. And uh, I, I, I believe, Sheila, that we do need to get reservations. <laughs> so, We have a connection to 73 and Lane. Her name is Sheila. So if you want to join me uh, next Sunday or any Sunday in March, but you do need to get your name in and give them a time. And so that starts next Sunday. Okay? Yes. Oh, most important. Thank you. Oh, the absolute most important. Person. <laughs> this Saturday... I would like to encourage as many of you women, ladies, girls to come on out to meet. We're going to try, those who want to meet, we're going to meet at the food line up here at the Union Street. Yes. And um, we'll probably need to meet around 7, 7.15. That way we can get there when the doors open at 8.30. We want to be there when the doors open at 8.30 because in the auditorium it seats around 400. But we like to sit up front. The past, the two years that we went, Becky Rice and about seven or eight others we went, we like to get there early, get our seats up front. I am going to just tell you that I am probably ADD. I have diagnosed myself. And <laughs> self-diagnosed. But if I sit in the back, you know, I'm going to be watching everything that's happening in front of me, and I'm going to start drifting, thinking, why are they doing that? So I like to be up front. I need to be up front. My attention needs to be up front. So it's a wonderful time. There's this group kind of called High Roads. They're wonderful. They're about 28 to 32 years old of age, and they're very gifted in their different music instruments that they play. Um, so if you have not got your ticket, you can go on a 1-800 number. And then you can go to iTickets, and I notice that's not in the bulletin for you to have that. So I, I have this paper right here that you can sign up on, and I'm going to write that 1-800 number down, and I'm going to put that iTicket information so you can do that. I know there's probably about six cars going at this point. You do not have to meet. You do not have to carpool, or, I mean, a caravan with us. I have a, I have two that have spots in their vehicle if you would like to ride with people. So just, I need your phone numbers on here also. So if you can do that for me, that would be great. This Saturday, ladies conference, ladies, if you can do what? You need to say something? You can say it. Okay. <laughs> Here. Ladies conference this Saturday, right, lady, and, and uh, see Mary Snow if you want to go. It's going to be good. I would highly encourage you to do that. Now, Saturday. Sunday after service. Yeah, let's do it. Sunday after service, I love No, no, don't, don't be up. We don't be up. <laughs> That's not true. You come in front of that pole. That's true. <laughs> with the luncheon at the barn for her bridal shower. So those of you who are not going to Sunday 3rd of May, come on to the barn and we'll be celebrating with Mainland. Got it. Okay. Thank you.
if something don't get said that should be said, go ahead and get mad at me because I just can't keep it all straight sometimes. But uh, just bear with us. Thank you for that. We're going to take our kids to class, take a break, and come right back for some worship. <laughs>
You know, you start thinking about things like that. And we worked on them and worked on them, and, and you know, it's not like that's necessarily unusual in the business, but you think about the moments you enter into in people's lives sometimes. There, and it kind of strikes you later on when you start thinking about it, it doesn't really hit you in. Myself and the medical on the other side of it were the last two people who ever saw this world. What was family, what was wife, what was kids. The last people that ever saw it. In John chapter 13, there's a scene with Jesus and his disciples, and they're in the upper room. And they're celebrating Passover. And it's already kind of a tense time because he's been warning them and he begins to warn them again that you're going to be betrayed. It's going to be one of you guys. And they already know it's kind of dangerous being in Jerusalem anyway, but now this, that the real danger is coming from within. But then he begins to speak words of comfort to them. And he gets down and he washes their feet. In that moment, where they've already started to grieve. <coughs> And he begins to tell them, where I am, there you may be also. I'm going to prepare a place for you, and you already know the way. And Thomas says, well, when we know where you're going, how in the world can we know the way? You know, it's interesting, when Jesus responds, he doesn't tell him where he's going. He just tells him how to get there. And Jesus says, I am the way. And I am the truth, and I am the You know, I thought about that scene Thursday night, and literally a family is out in the middle of the road with us. Because we're, we're in the middle of the road in this neighborhood, and they're grieving out there in the street, in the dark, at night, with a bunch of people they don't know of us. And you think about, you know, that's an odd situation for most of you guys, but you're, you and your place to those moments of time in people's life. We're in a position to speak some more of hope to folks. It could be your very presence. It could be the words you speak. It could be the actions you take. It's just a reminder you just never know what that person in front of you means or needs and why God may have put you there. Amen? Amen. And I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. And I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. And I believe you are.
just so everybody understands, just so everybody knows, uh, I know we laugh and do silly things. Because people are important. What's important to God's people is important to the church. But just so you know, I just need you to understand, God the Holy Spirit is in charge of this service. Does everybody understand that? And I just want you to know, this altar is, is best, it's, it's not much of an altar. But this altar is always open. It's warm up here. So, it's friendly at the altar. And in a group like this, there's undoubtedly folks that are here today with really something heavy on your heart. Burdens, concerns. So, if, if any time you need to come pray and just get out on your knees, I want you to know you are welcome. You're welcome. You're not going to bother us. Um, just a lot of people have things on their hearts. And, and it's a good place, it's a good thing to come to church and be able to share those things with your Lord and your Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. I'm thinking about, I have a friend, his name is Rodney. He is at uh, Northeast, and he's, he's been in the hospital for a long time, and he's just not well. And uh, I've enjoyed my visits with him. And, and uh, he's, he's Brooke's daddy. And I just know that's heavy on her heart. And I know you have things on your heart as well. But I just want you to know, this, this isn't our deal. This isn't our program. This is God. God the Holy Spirit's in charge of this service. And we have a plan. And I always tell folks, this is our agenda. This is what may happen today. But if God has other plans, we'll do something different. We will go wherever God wants to take us at church on Sunday mornings at the community church. We're not going to program God out of church. Because His stuff's more important than ours. I, and, I, you know, I watch the clock. I have my clock back here. I, I try to be sensitive to that. But listen, the clock isn't in control of community church Mount Pleasant. God, the Holy Spirit's in charge here. And I just need to make sure everybody understands that we're on His program today. Let's pray. Lord, I thank You for the, the time together as a family. It's, it's, a, it's just a big old family reunion today. And I'm so glad. I'm so thankful to know these people. These are your people. This is your place. It certainly isn't ours. And God, I pray that uh, as you speak into the life of, of us today, God, that we would just be obedient. That we would listen. And be sensitive to you. That we would not be embarrassed or proud. That we would just obey you. And follow you. And do whatever you tell us to do. So God, before the message today, we, we invite you. Into our thoughts and our minds. And keep us focused and keep us eager and hungry to learn from your word today. God, show us who you are more than ever. And I'm glad you're in control. I'm glad you're in charge. And we submit to you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Start a new series, a short series, two-part series today. Who is God? Yeah, wow. That's a real original topic. Can you come up with something better than that? Yeah, I could, but that's kind of what the question is. Who is God? It's an important question. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to, to see some of you made it out of the mall last night. I guess they're 
there were gunshots, but there really weren't. There was a fight. I don't know what happened. You know, stuff happens in this world that we live in. These are perilous times, church. The Bible tells us that. These are perilous times. That means at any, any morning you wake up, you can see things like that on TV and in your newspaper and online. Crazy things. Things you haven't even experienced before because these are perilous times. But I can tell you something. Our God is in control of these perilous times. You don't have to worry. You just trust Him. I'm glad you're here today. I want you to open your Bibles to, uh, let's start in John. Well, let's start in Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 9 today. But the question is, who is God? And, and what I want you to think about today are the attributes of God. We're going to do a study about God. And, and we're going to talk about who He is. And, and, and so I want you to work with me because this is, have your listening ears on today. Because we're going to learn some new words and some new concepts, maybe for some of you, about our Heavenly Father, our God. Today, the attributes that only God has, we call these attributes incommunicable. That means that they, they, are only, they only belong to God. They're only His. We're going to study about that today. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about some more attributes of God that He shares with us. These are communicable attributes. And again, you just need to, you need to dig in and listen carefully and eagerly and, and learn with me and be hungry to learn about God. Amen. Before we start, I want, I want to ask you a question. I want, to think of, I want you to think of... of uh, let's do this. In, in order to know somebody... In order to know somebody, you've got to you got to know about that. You got to learn about that person if you're going to know them. And so I want to give you a, a little exercise. So I want you to say one word that is an attribute of your spouse. And let's try to make it positive. So you can tell when folks. What y'all do at church? Say we had marital counseling today at church. We Beautiful. Shared attributes about our spouse. So, one word, I want you to, to tell me one word that is an attribute of your spouse. Awesome. What? Awesome. awesome. Wow. Man, there's some brownie points over there for Tony. That a boy. Kindness. That's a good one. Thank you. What else? I'm sorry. Strong. Strong. Man, isn't that good? Stable. Stable. Hmm. Loving. Loving. Oh, that's good. More brownie points. Intentional. Sacrificing. Sacrificing. Intentional. Intentional. That's a good. That's a good one. That is also accurate. <laughs> what else? Smart. Smart. Absolutely. Thank you. Faithful. Faithful. Love. Do what? Selfless. Well, oh, this is good. These are good. Supportive. Do what? Supportive. Supportive. Isn't that good? This is not only uh, these are not only attributes. These are in inspirational for the rest of us because I'm like, man, I need mean, it. That's good, right? Any any others? Patient. Ooh. Who said that? Amy. Man. That is a good one, Adam. Y'all need to go talk to Adam. I need to go talk to Adam. Patience. Wow. That's good. Faithful. Faithful. Anything else? Uh, hey, how about that? I like it. I like it. Anything else? Steadfast and strong. Steadfast and strong. These are attributes of your spouse. So... Here's, here's the point in that little exercise. If you're thinking about a person that you know, and you're trying to think about that person, and you try to describe that person, in order to describe them, you have to know them. You have to get to know them. These attributes, you have to learn. You have to spend time with that person. It is no different with your God. 
It's no different. Because your Heavenly Father wants to have a relationship with you. It's amazing how sometimes people, you know, they'll ask maybe, and the pastor, how do you, I just, this whole God thing, I mean, it's like he's up there and I'm here. And this God, he wants, to, he wants you to know Him. Just like you, when, when, you're, when you're young and you, you meet that person and you're, you, they, you notice them and they're like, wow, who is that? I really want to get to know them because I like what I see. And so God wants to get to know you. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about attributes. I want to talk about characteristics that belong to our God. Jeremiah chapter 9, and these verses will just read two as a springboard uh, to, to what God wants for us in a relationship. Verse, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. A little bit obscure. You may not be familiar with these verses, but they're wonderful verses. Listen. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. And that's so much what we do. Where do you gain your self-esteem? Maybe your job. Maybe your talent. Maybe your bank account. I don't know. But this verse really kind of clarifies this whole thing for us. Verse 24. It says, uh, not, not in your wisdom, not in your might, not in your riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this. This is really what you should get your, your self-esteem from. Verse 24. That he understands and knows who? Me. Who's me? God. Not wisdom, not might, not power, not money, not any of this. You don't glory in that. There's something more important. Verse 24. But let him glory in this, that he understands and knows his God. That's really the only thing that we have that is worthy of glorying in. I am the Lord, which exercise... Here are some attributes of God. Loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. And then right before we start, let me look over in John chapter 17, verse 3. Uh, this is the words of Christ. Jesus is speaking. John 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal. Let me give you, I love it because Jesus is a master teacher and she says, let me, let me give you a bottom line here, okay? This is life eternal. That they might, what's that next word? Know. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast so, as we start, as we dive in, I want you to understand, first of all, it is possible for you to know God. You can know Him. It's not that He's up there somewhere in an abstract world and you're here far away in a world of reality. No, you can know God. In fact, you were created to know God. That is your purpose. The Creator of life created you so that you can have a relationship with Him. Did you need a little help with your self-esteem today? How about that? You know what your purpose is? You are so important that God wants to know you. 
Well, now let's think about that. Let, let's say, uh, it, it, let's think about a celebrity or someone that is, you know, popular or famous in your world. And I don't know, um, I don't know who you're, who, who would, who would you absolutely love to meet? We missed out on Elvis. Uh, I'm Billy Graham. Probably. Um, who else would you like to meet? Well, y'all are not very Carson ambitious. Wentz. Do what? Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz, president for the or, <laughs> quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Carson Wentz, be, be a great young guy. Anybody else you'd like to meet? Tim Tebow. Interesting guy. Um, could I get a Nick Saban from this section over here? <laughs> Probably could. Well, let me let me. Here's the thing, Bill. As great a guy as Tim Tebow is, his his great ambition in his life is probably not to meet Bill Nork. I don't mean to. I don't mean to. You know, I don't mean that. And you're like, well, that's stupid. What do you mean by that? Well, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Do you know what God's highest ambition is? To know you. You. And you're not even a celebrity. I, I have never been able to get over the fact that God wants to know me. Amen. Can you imagine that? The creator mm. of everything. So we're going to talk about how we can get to know God. We're going to, we're going to work on getting to know God because of who He is. And, and the more you get to know your spouse or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or someone in your life, is to get to know them by being around them and learning about them. And so we want to, you can know God. All right, let's talk about some attributes that belong to God. The definition of attribute is this. An attribute is a quality or feature regarded as a characteristic or inherent part of someone or something. That is an attribute. It's a noun. It's, it's a part of who you are. It's a part of the quality that you possess as a person. And so we're going to learn about the attributes of God today and next Sunday. So, to describe God, you would need to know Him. Because those things, wonderful things you said about your spouse, you would not be qualified to save them if you not got to know your spouse. Does this make sense? Are you with me? So, in order to know God, we need to know <clears throat> about His attributes and who He is. And the more you get to know God, you will begin to know more about Him. In order to describe God, you would need to know Him. You need to be around Him. You need to talk to this person. You, you need to learn to lean on them. Just like a real person in your life. Here's God's plan. This is fascinating to me. God's plan. God created humans for relationships. That's why you're here. With each other, we, God created us to have relationships with each other. The family. He created us to have relationships with the world we live in. Now, I'm not a... Uh, I, I wouldn't <laughs> consider myself an extreme environmentalist. But guess what? God created us to build a relationship with our world. It's good to, it's good to take care of your animals. <clears throat> well, I'm serious. It's good to take care of the planet that God has put us on. That's the relationship that we have with, with each other and with the world that we live in and with God, even more important than any of that. Here's the problem. There's this great concept that God came up with and all of a sudden man comes along and messes it up. That's, that's man's history. That's kind of how man does. Man messes up good stuff. So here's the problem. Human sin separated us from God. 
turning what should have been a loving relationship into one filled with hate and disobedience. Do you know there are people that hate God? <coughs> is, that, is that not hard to imagine? There are people that hate God. They're angry, they're bitter, they're frustrated, they're, uh, they're lost. That's because of sin. Because sin separates us from a proper relationship with God. Romans 5.10 We were enemies with God, we're told. Yet, God reached down to us to deliver us from sin and death because He wants to have a relationship with us. In Christ, God has built a bridge that allows us to relate to Him in Christ. I do not have the capacity because of my sin to get to God. I can't, I can't give enough money to the church. I can't do enough good deeds. I do not have the capacity because of my sin to get to God. But there's a bridge. And His name is Jesus. So now, because of Jesus, I have the capacity and the ability to get into a relationship with God. That's the core of everything. That's more important than anything. So how do we get to know God? Also, our obedience, our service will spring forth from our knowledge and our love and our relationship with God. The more we know God, the more we, our love can grow and mature. So why do some not obey and serve Him? Everybody don't. Can I boil it down for you? Because they don't know Him. To know God is to love God. And so, people don't honor and serve and obey because they don't know God. They don't know Him. So, how do we get to know Him? Our relationship with God begins and ends with Jesus. We get to know God as we know Jesus. His death and resurrection have given us direct access to God. We know Jesus and God in two ways. The work of the Holy Spirit in each of us. And number two, the revealed Word of God. Listen, folks, you, you, I, know, I know we talk, we get together, we laugh, we have fun, but, but when we open God's book and we have church and we read and study and teach and dive into the Word of God, that's what church is all about. That's how we get to know God. We don't get to know God because of games and fun and eating. We get to know God because we're the Holy Spirit of God works in us and we read and study and prepare ourselves and open our hearts so that God can speak to us through His Word. Never, ever minimize the significance of God's Word. This is, Amen. this is the most important thing there is in our life. And if you minimize this book, you're limiting your relationship with God. This is the way to know God. So let's get to know Him. Alright, there are eight attributes that I'm going to talk about today. I'll talk about each of them uh, briefly. And these are what we call incommunicable attributes. That means that, that only God possesses these. Only God possesses. Now, next week we're going to study more attributes that God shares with us. God has given us the capacity to have certain attributes that He originated. But today, these, these the ones we're going to study, that only God has them. We can't get them. As we learn and think about God's character, we begin to realize how glorious and loving and awe-inspiring and holy He is. Can I just stop and talk about God today? Just Let's just talk about God today. He's awesome. He's any word you can think of that's bigger than any word you could ever think of to describe Him. I don't have words to describe our God. He is the only one worthy of our allegiance. He's the only one. Worthy. 
Jesus modeled these characteristics by his life and ministry. We can too. Attributes that only God has. All right, I'm going to go two at a time here. If you have your bulletin, they're, they're in there. And, and this might help you because these are big words. Some of them are big words. And some of these, listen, you got to think, some of these concepts are a little bit abstract. Some new, new you're going to learn some new stuff today. But we need to. We need to learn about our God. And it is hard to teach about our amazing, incredible, awesome, wonderful God. Because He's beyond words. The first two. One and two. We'll do these together. God is triune and is one. Now, let me explain. While being one, God is triune. These two exist in tension with each other. This is a... This is a very divisive concept in, in the world that we live in today. There are people that will come and knock on your door and they will say, Hello, can I share with you from God's Word, the Bible? Do you have a minute to talk about the Bible? And you may or may not entertain that person, but there are other people that you might want to talk to or may not want to talk to. And, and if you really want to get down quickly and save some time to the heart of the issue, you might say something to them like, who do you think God is? And this, this specific attribute of God is going to separate our God. Many, many, many of the belief systems, dare I say cults, in our world today. While being one God, while being one, God is triune. These two exist in tension with each other. We know both are correct. But it is not easy to understand how they exist together. Number one, God is one. Deuteronomy 6 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. God is one in two ways. There is no other being like God, He's the only one. There's only one God. You know what? I, I grow so weary. I see these bumper stickers. Coexist. Really? Oh, there's many ways to heaven. No, there's not. Oh, there's many God. No, there's not. There's only one. And He is God. And that's why we're here today to worship Him. He is God. There's only one of them. He's one. I yelled a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> Stacy got me. God is one in two ways. There's no other being like God. And, and He's one in another way. God is the only real God. You know, you know people worship all kinds of things. I mean, in some parts, it, it, people worship cows. Man, I eat cows. <laughs> God is one. God is also triune. Now, listen. You got to. You got to stay with me. God is one being who exists in three persons. This is the divider from a lot of cults that will want to try to coerce you into believing like they believe. The Trinity is the one bottom line issue that you really need to go ahead and go right to that when you're talking to other people with other beliefs. Because most cults do not believe in the Trinity. Oh, God is wonderful. He is one of many. He is... A great teacher. Te well, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, he was a great teacher, but he wasn't God because God was God. Jesus wasn't God because Jesus was Jesus. No, Jesus was God. Yes. And God is God. And the Holy Spirit is God. Well, how do you explain it? I don't know. I just believe it. Amen. Because the Bible says it. Thank you. 
Sometimes you just got to draw the line and say, you know, I'm sick of kind of all this wishy-washy. I just need to decide what do I really believe? Get you a place and park it there. But make sure it's coming from God's Word. Because if somebody can talk you into something, somebody will come along right behind them with a better deal and they'll talk you out of it. There you go. You better hang on to the Word of God. Church, I'm, I'm burdened. I've got to teach the church the Word of God. We have to learn this. You have to teach your kids this. Because I promise you, the world is going to pull that rug right out from under. They're going to put so much junk in your kids' hands. You better teach them what the Bible says. You better know it yourself. God is one being who exists in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three separate persons. But all three are the share the same divine being. They are God. He is God. The unity of persons is called the Godhead. And if you and I really would like for you to write these passages down because you need to go find out for yourself. Matthew 28, 19. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. Titus 3, 4 through 6. As soon as Jesus was baptized, He went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open and He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on Him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my Son who I love, and with Him I am well pleased. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. We have a model for healthy personal relationships in the way the Trinity relates to each other. God is one. God is triune. There's only one of them. There's no other like our God. Alright, three and four. Okay, we're good. Three and four. God is big words. He is transcendent. And He is infinite. I'll work on these two together as well. Transcendent. He is beyond the universe and beyond our intelligence and imagination. We naturally have limits to how far our understanding of God can go. There's some smart folks in here. The smartest person in here can't really get it. Because it's beyond what you and I can really understand. He's transcendent. God is not united or connected with something that He created. He is outside the universe. He's more. He's bigger. He's better. He's more. He's outside what He created. God is far beyond us and only accessible to us because He reaches out to us. Listen. You can't get to God. But He came to you. God is also infinite. God is above our standards. God has no limits because He is beyond limits. This is an encouraging thought when we face troubles and trials. When you get down and hurting, and crying, and frustrated. The one you know is beyond all of that. He's God. He's bigger than all that. And here we get one little, Oh, Pastor, you got to pray for me. I, I, I lost. I did. My car. Yeah. Right, stop. Hold up. I got it. I got it. I'm there too. I get there too. Remember who God is? I know that you can do all things. Here's some more scripture if you need to look these up. Job 42, 2. 1 Kings 8, 27. Job 5, 9. Psalm 145, 3. You need to slow that down a little bit. <laughs> Watch the video. <laughs> The bread is cooking. <laughs> Job 42, 2, 1 Kings 8, 27. Job 5, 9, Psalm 145, 3. 
And there is a video on the, our open Facebook page. It's, Ken posts it each Sunday evening, and there's one on Wednesday if you want to go back. And you can scoot over to this, this part too. An infinite God can give all of Him. Now listen, you need to, I know, I know this might be a little bit deeper or different, but you need to get this, church. An infinite God can give all of Himself to each of His children. I can't do that. I can only give you so much of me. Because there's only so much of me to go around, and that's a good thing. I can, I can, I have my wife, I have my two children. I can, there's only so much of me to go around. Not God! Not God! He does not distribute Himself that each may have a part of Him. Are you listening to me? Amen. But to each one, to each one, he gives all of himself. Amen. It ain't like the preacher. Oh, Pastor, can I have a couple of your minutes? Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll try to give you. Not God. He gives you. All of Himself! You! You don't have to share God! There's no human that can do that. God can. Because He's infinite. He gives all of Himself as fully as if there was no others. Just like you are the only one in the world, He gives all of Himself to just you. You're pretty special. Don't you let some person tell you you're not special. Because you're real special. Five and six together. God is eternal and He is creator. <laughs> Being eternal refers to time. We're trying to capture some feasible ways for us to understand who God is. Let's talk about time. God does not have a beginning and He doesn't have an end. You do. You have a birthday. Not God. He just was. He just is. He, he is. I am the Alpha and Omega who was and is to come. The Almighty. That's God. No time. Okay. Revelation 1 8. You ready? Revelation 1 8. Deuteronomy 33 27. Psalm 90 1, 2, 1 and 2. Isaiah 40 28. Jeremiah 10 10. And Jude 25. If God is eternal, He existed before anything else then He is also Creator. No one created God, but He created all of it! His existence does not depend on anything or anybody because He just is. God doesn't owe anything to anybody. His loyalties are not Compromise. We experience hurt often because people betray us. Have you ever had somebody hurt you deeply? That happens. Conflict. God has no conflicts of interest. Let me say, let me say it again. God has no conflict of interest. Oh, I do. Oh, I'm torn. Are you, do you ever just get torn? I want to go here, but I want to go here, but I got to be here. And I want to be with this one. But I really need to be with this one. Not God. He's not torn like we are. He has no limitations. God doesn't owe anything to anybody. We experience hurt because people betray us and they hurt us. Nothing will stop Him from loving us. All for us to do is trust Him. Number seven. We're almost done. Omnipresent. God is omnipresent. 
This has to do with space. Remember? Time. Now space. God is omnipresent. He is present where? He's everywhere. You can't go anywhere where He's not. And how feeble, how small for us to think Nobody saw me. Really? Come on, folks. Nobody saw that. Yeah, they did. His name is God. Because He's everywhere. Every second of your life, He's always accessible. He cannot ever leave our side. Well, I just don't feel like God is here. Now, that's a real brilliant thought. He is. Well, I just don't feel Him. Well, He's there! Who moved? Not God. We can't hide from God. We cannot escape from God. There's nowhere we can run that He is not. No one will be able to stand against you. All the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1.5 Man, this is good. I'm working on your self-esteem, your encouragement. There's no reason to be afraid. Number eight. God is also immutable. <sighs> what, a, what an attribute. This, I, okay, I'm the opposite of this. God is immutable. God is always the same. You ever have a bad day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have a good day? <laughs> Maybe that's the question. Guess what? God has never had a bad day. <laughs> God is incapable of having a bad day. It can't happen. Because He can't change. Because He's God. God does not change. He will never become evil, weak, hateful, or cruel. Never! I will. Man, I got a bad day. I have a bad moment from time to time. I change. You get me on a good, you might catch me on a bad time. Not God. No matter what, we can depend on God. He is totally consistent and unchanged. Reliable, dependable, trustworthy. He cannot be otherwise. Okay. Here's the summary. Here's the application. Here's the takeaway. What an awesome and glorious God we have come to church to worship today. I don't know any other words. I don't have any other words. We sing words. We write words. We read words. I don't have any words. For God. Although God is so far away from any of our common experience, He still reaches out right where you are. He still desires to relate to us in personal, intimate ways. If I had a, I can have an object up here, I could have a rock, a big old rock. And I, you, you know, you can think, man, that thing is going to be, it's been there forever, it's going to be there, it will not change. You know what? It's possible for that rock to change. There are ways to decompose an object like that. Whatever you think will never change, it will. Except God. Yeah. Not God. He doesn't change. His love for you no matter what you do. Every sermon we preach from the Bible comes back to what? Grace. Grace. 
You can preach on anything. And it comes back to the cross. It always comes back to grace because that's who God is. And He won't change. And, and, and sometimes we think, oh well, I've, I've done, God can never forgive me. Seriously. Is there a more arrogant thing for you to say? Think about that. Oh, God can... You know what I did, preacher. Oh, like you're some super powerful, powerful sinner. God can't change. His love for you will never change. The nothing you could ever do could change the grace that He has for you. Because He's God. Two verses I'll read and then I'll be done. Psalm 33, 11. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of His heart through all generations. James 1, 17. Every good gift, you know this, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, no change, neither shadow of turning. I want you to bow your heads and, and we're going to wrap it up today. Let me ask you a question. I've, I've, <laughs> you talk about an intimidating message to try to preach. Man, I have, I've, God, I am, I, I, who's worthy? Who's worthy to talk about God? Not me. I just tried to read the Bible to you. Let me ask you a question. Do you know Him? Now, let me rephrase that. I'm not asking, do you know who He is? There's a lot of... Hey, let me give you, tell you a secret. The devil knows who God is. <coughs> the devil isn't going to be in eternity with God. My question is, do you know Him? That's the most important question that you will ever be faced with. Nothing else is important as important as that question. It is possible today for you to enter into a relationship with this God. Because He created you to have a relationship with Him. So I'm going to do this. I, I am compelled. Well, preacher, you just, you're done. Why can't we just go? Because I am compelled to give you an opportunity to respond to what the Holy Spirit is speaking into your heart right now. You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm not sure I really know how to do it, but I really do want to know Him. I, I, I've known about Him all my life. And I really want to know Him. <coughs> so I'm going I'm to ask you to do this. I'm, I'm, again, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask you to join me if you have a desire to know this God. Now understand, this pastor's words do not have the power to save you. It's your words and your heart before God. And I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. Wherever you are, I don't care how old you are, I don't care how much money, none of that matters. Nothing matters today <coughs> except you and God. And so if you really, genuinely in your heart have a desire to know Him and have a relationship with Him, and you're like, well, Pastor, it, it's embarrassing because I've been in church all my life, but I'm really, I don't know Him. Would you let embarrassment keep you out of heaven? I want you to pray this prayer if you want to enter into a relationship with this God. Dear God, I've heard about you. I've been to church. But I just really don't know you. I don't, 
We don't interact. I have not felt you supernaturally change my life. God, right now, I want that more than anything else. I want a relationship with you. I'm ready. I've, I've ran. I've fought. I've struggled. I've hid. I've avoided. And maybe I just didn't, had never understood. But today's my day. Today's my day. So God, I just want to ask you, for lack of, of better words, would you, would you be my friend? Would you just, just be my friend? I want to know you. I want to learn about you and grow to trust you. Would you be a part of my life? And, and God, I, I am confessing this lostness. To, I'm confessing that to you. I'm guilty. I'm unworthy. So God, I'm, I'm throwing myself at your mercy right now. And I'm asking you to be my father. I'm, I'm asking you to forgive me for my negligence, for my unbelief, for my lack of, of understanding. God, I accept your grace that you have extended to me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me because you sent him to save my soul. God, I, I, I not only have heard that, I accept it. It's real now. It's in my heart. I acknowledge you as Lord of Lords, as Lord of my life. I give you my life now as I've never done before. So God, now help me on this journey to walk with you. Give me a hunger for your word and your people and your work. Thank you for changing me and making me a new creature. I want you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And, and, and this is important. It's not important because I need to know. It's important because you need to give a testimony. You need to share what you just did. Wow. Boy, I really, really, really don't do this very often. But if you, if you did that right now, today, and you really, really meant it, you want a relationship with God, I'm going to ask you to stand up and I'm going to ask you to come up here and stand by me. Right now. Anybody?
and, and, and just let everybody know, God, they're not ashamed. They're not afraid to follow you right now. God, I'm glad that they are now new creatures. They're my brothers. We're family. We're going to be in heaven together forever because of the choice they made today. God, bless these men. God, this don't mean they'll be perfect. They won't. But they'll be saved. And they'll be forgiven. And help them to be the men you've called them to be. God, bless them. And Lord, I know that there are probably others that didn't come forward. But they prayed and they opened their heart to you. So God, bless them too. Give them that peace. Don't let them feel any less saved. Because they invited you into their life. Thank you for the amazing attributes of who you are and for letting us meet you today. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And all of heaven's an angel. Here's what I want you to do. We're trying to get to know who God is. We're going to, by the way, we're going to be doing that forever in, in heaven. That's what heaven is. We'll be doing that for all eternity. Ever. So I want you to do this. I want you to come by and shake these guys' hands and give them a hug and say, Welcome to the family. Is y'all family now? And if you have prayed and trusted Christ, God bless you. Welcome to the family. If you give money to God, you put it in that box that's between you and you and God. Uh, if you're too stingy to give to God, then you that's you <laughs> Next Sunday, see series number number two, more attributes of God. Have a great week. God bless you. We love you.